This episode brought to you by LaCroix Sparkling Water. It's effervescent. This is Hot Drop, where we bring you premier PUBG analysis and looty tooty shooty drops. I'm Dano. And I'm Cody. And let's get into it. We're at episode 48, Dan, and we're back. We're back. The boys are back in town. We were back in town, and now we, again, are back in town. And we, to this day, continue to be back in town. Correct. Um, we we took a little bit of a, a little breather here for a bachelor party, and Dan, I was moving. Uh, in the meantime, I drank a lot of beer and refurbished a desk and a kitchen table. I uh, moved. You might have heard that. I put together a dresser that took three hours. I put together a desk that took two hours, uh, and now I'm at a beautiful apartment. I have an office. It's echoey because I'm in a large room that has nothing on the walls, but I'm working on that. But man, it's good to be back. What a freaking welcome we got back on our stream on Monday oh night. Oh my God, you I guys was, came out in droves. Couldn't believe it. So honestly. cool. Thank Discord you so much. Just, Discord is just through the roof with activity right now. Thank you to everybody. I mean, the PC people, we took over Discord today. Xbox usually dominates that. <laughs> uh, it was pretty cool. Come hang out on our Discord. It's a fun place to be. We're getting more and more people every single day. Uh, you guys just rock my socks off. Yeah. At one point, I logged in, and there was 275 unread messages, and that was like over the course of an hour. I just I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And we got a couple of cool new rooms as well. We've got the Battle Stations room where you can show off your rigs and your uh, gaming rooms. Uh, we've got the Food Channel now, which is dominated by our resident chef, Dot Will, dropping all of his delicious creations into that channel. Just come hang out. It's a super good time. It's a really good way to procrastinate. Yeah, it. and it's not always about PUBG. Like this no, is about definitely PUBG. Not. This podcast focuses on PUBG, but our Discord is just a place to hang out, talk some PUBG, find some people to play, and talk about whatever else you want to. It's awesome. Come hang out. Yeah, like today awesome. I learned how to make the best uh, French fries from home without a deep fryer. Like, yeah, it's it's everything. We got some cool stuff. We do, but also donate to our Patreon, please, because uh, I really want an Xbox and I can't afford one. So. Uh, thanks to Derek and Charlie for your um, your subscription slash donations. You guys are awesome. Um, get a few more of you in there. We can we can keep this this show going here. Upgrade our stuff a little bit. Um, make it a lot nicer and and just keep improving for you guys. Yeah, very much appreciated. And please rate us on iTunes as well. Uh, if you get a moment, it's really easy. Just go in and press the however many stars five uh, you want to give us. So what do we have? Uh, as far as news, we've got a uh, top 10 contest. This has been going on for a couple weeks now. We announced it uh, a couple weeks back. We already have the first winner, uh, Mr. Suds. We announced that. And then we have Colonel Ping, just won last week's. So uh, this week is already wrapped up. Uh, we do the submissions from Wednesday to Wednesday. And uh, this week was just a regular top 10 best plays. And I'm putting together that video now. That should be out in the next day or so. Uh, but in the meantime, you can start submitting for next week. And uh, please, only three-ish submissions per person. Um, but next week is going to be your best grenade plays. Could be frag grenade, could be smoke, could be stun, could be whatever you want. Could be Molotov. Uh, show us your best grenade plays. And again, the winner will get a custom Discord emote of their choice. And I'm sorry, Colonel Ping, I'm working on that. I forgot to add yours. It's coming soon. Beautiful. Call Xbox. the hotline, everybody. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Oh, I, How could I forget my favorite segment? We called you out last time. You actually responded. We got a couple of voicemails. Keep the voicemails coming. We want to hear them. We appreciate them. They are more important to us than your words via text message. Truth. Call cool. it. 508-216-0006. Leave us a message. We'll play it. We laugh. Make it playing. It makes our, it makes our day just... So warm and yeah. fuzzy. I love it's very it. nice. So maybe now Xbox. What do you think? Now we go to the Xbox box. What's in the box? Oh, so much news. We have so much to catch up on. We do. So the week of July 1st. Uh, so it was, I, I think it was technically last Friday. Um, 
but uh, we have an Xbox Community Weekly Post. And before we get any further, I just want to say that they keep doing this where it's like, here's our weekly post, but then they never do another one after that. <laughs> and then yeah. it's like, here's our update number one, and then there's never an update number two. Just, just something that I thought was interesting. Carry on. Yeah, so they say, hi, everybody. First off, we want to thank everybody for the feedback last week, both positive and negative. Each of these community posts are intended to give more visibility on what we're working on and will continue to address players' questions and concerns. While there are no hot fixes this week, they're currently working on a patch that will improve and resolve many of the current issues, which we hope to deploy by next week. Spoiler alert, they did. <laughs> so um, map selection. Uh, current plan is to have map selection available by late summer, early fall. Not confirmed yet, but they're going to let us know as soon as possible. So I think that this is just going to align pretty well with the Sanok Savage Funky Chicken release for Xbox yeah. because and, there's only two maps right now, so yep. it doesn't really make sense to have map selection. Right. Yeah, it's going to happen pretty fast. You guys are on an expediated timeline compared to what PC had, so yeah. expect that to come pretty soon here. Uh, character position readjustment, i.e. rubber banding. Uh, it happens when there's a conflict between the player's location, client side versus server side. When it happens, the player's location is forced to the last position the server confirmed them at. Uh, they're working on it. That's yeah. all they're really saying. They're working on it. It gets better. But they're calling it rubber banding again, which is cool. Yeah. Remember yeah. when they stopped calling it that? Yep. Let's call it what it is. Uh, yeah, they're working on it. Server side update and improve the handling of players' locations. It's all about desync between the server and the client. Yep. Uh, hit registration in general. Um, they had a few different complaints about different scenarios, um, and they are about to address those now. Dan? Sure. So limb penetration does not exist on Xbox, and I don't think it exists on PC either. They've mentioned it a few times, but I don't remember any patch notes saying that they officially implemented it. Uh, but they say that PUBG calculates damage differently depending on where on the body a player is hit, and we know this. We know those charts that show you, you know, SMGs for some strange reason, reason do 120 percent damage to limbs and like 100 percent to chest and like 150 to the head or something like that so we have the hit multipliers but depending on where your bullets strike um this oftentimes leads to when a shot is fired it would hit a target's head it would not hit a target's head but instead hit the target's hand or arm as they raise their weapon to aim down the sights so their hand uh is blocking the head and the bullet is not penetrating the hand, therefore the bullet is doing a lot less damage than you would expect, even though your crosshair was perfectly aligned with the head. So they're going to add limb penetration soon. They're calculating uh, you know, whether there are any body parts behind the limb uh, that is shot, and then calculating the damage as if it hit the more vital area. So while we do want to implement this as soon as possible, they say they're currently working on optimizing the limb penetration system to reduce the resources it uses so that there is no negative effect on performance when they finally do roll it out. They also have uh, desync they mention here as part of another reason for hit registration problems. Um, other reports show that damage is taken after cover has been taken or when there is no clear line of sight. And if you watched the last week's uh, top 10, the number 10 play that was submitted by clay, uh, he got run over when he was very much behind cover. And then there was a replay showing the same thing. He, his, his body was completely covered up, hidden behind cover. And then a buggy just ran him over. Uh, and that's the same thing here with hit registration is that this is due to a ping difference when the player between the player and the server. Uh, so this happens mostly because the physical location of the two players are different. Uh, so uh, NA player located uh, playing on an EU server would cause a ping difference and therefore desync between uh, the, the two player locations. Um, so hit registration bug, uh, there's a bug in it as well, I guess. Uh, there have been some reports that shots do not register on a targeted player and no damage is applied even at close distances. This is difficult to replicate uh, because there's a lot of variables at play and a lot of different conditions that affect this. But they say they're working hard on reproducing it to make sure that when you hit and you see blood splatter, that there actually is uh, a connection and damage taken. Nice. The only good bug is a dead bug, they say. There are two more bugs alongside the hit registration bug mentioned above that they need additional help from us with, uh, as the repro steps are more complicated than the majority of other issues. So replicating issues reliably every time 
helps them investigate and resolve the problem quickly. Uh, if they have any extra details about like what system you're using, etc., uh, if you are, are using a wired or wireless connection, if you're in first person or third person, um, any other information that you can give them that will help them narrow down uh, a, cons a consistent reproduction of this bug, uh, send it over to them with as much detail as possible. Uh, report it to them and send it over. There's also a grenade arc bug that they're working on. And again, they say they're tricky to reproduce. Um, if they, you've experienced any bug about the trajectory of the grade, grenade not following the arc line, uh, definitely send that in as well. And there's also the teleport bug and invisible winning player bug. And this is something someone brought up in Discord. I remember I was reading this. I don't remember who it was, but they were saying that there was no guy to kill at the very end of the game. It was just them, and they just ended up having to die to the blue because the game told them that there was an enemy to kill. They were two alive, but there was really only one alive. Um, so they say that the, the two bugs are actually related, the teleport bug and the invisible winning player bug. So sometimes a player teleports during vaulting, moving to a completely new location. We've seen this, it's hilarious. Uh, and usually the player is returned to their original location due to the client side, server side checks. But occasionally a player will be teleported out of the playable map area and is not able to be moved back in. So when this happens, the teleported player is not affected by the blue zone because they're probably outside of the play zone and underwater or inside the world or something, and they don't take damage. So if they stay until the very end of the game, they will win uh, because they're not taking damage while the person who didn't experience this bug is going to be steadily killed by the blue. So they're fixing that. If they fix the teleport bug, they will also fix the invisible winning player bug. Um, the bad news is that due to the bug not being able to be reproduced 100% of the time, it's taking a lot longer to find the cause and fix it. So if you have any information uh, about this bug, or if you can say uh, w any one of the times it might have happened to you, if you can describe the conditions under which that happened, just send it over to them and they will be forever thankful. And, and you're going to help them nail this down and, and make a better game out of it. So it's, it's worth your two minutes of time to, to send them reproduce uh, reproduction steps. And that's the weekly update. That was a lot of talking. <laughs> that is a lot of talking. And now for something completely different. We got the Big Daddy, Big Dog Xbox patch for everybody. Big Daddy, right. Big Dog. They mentioned it. They said it was coming. We had a spoiler alert. It's here. So it is available now, right? Now, Launches. yeah. The public test server is live. Play it right now. Live. Yep. Get on there. Go and do this. Remember a few weeks back when we got a giant update on weapon balances and all that fun stuff? I do recall that. I think you weren't there for that episode. I think you were the doing things. Episode? The whole episode? Uh, we had one episode, and then we broke it down. Me and John broke it down. We held held it down without you. That makes sense. Yeah. It was the bonus uh -huh. episode. Number 37, if you're interested. PC patch number 12. Episode well, 37 what, of Hot Drop. It's here for the Xbox. Are these the same numbers? These seem different. Everything is the same. I verified this before the start of this podcast because I like to do my research and make sure you guys get only the most correct information. It's all the same. All this patch is the same. We've we've seen it before on the PC. We've talked about it in great length. Um, they've here's the, here's the long the and short of it. Everybody, they buffed pistols hard, and they work now. They they are pretty cool. Um, shotguns, nah, pretty much stayed the same. Um, but here's the thing: SMGs are going to become one of your best friends again. You're going to yep. want to use the ump. A lot the vector tears through things. Tommy gun's still kind of useless because you can't put any kind of sight on it, but whatever. And but the Uzi's go, about the same too. Yeah. The ARs have been nerfed, but not by much, but their recoils are much different. Be yes. careful when you're using the ARs. They are wily as hell. So a quick rundown on some of the changes of the ARs, because that's probably the ones you're going to use the most. Mm -hmm. Um they decrease the damage of the five five six rifles. M16, yep. SCAR, AUG, M4. Uh, but they only decreased it by one point of damage, from 44 down to yes. 43. However, um, their recoil pattern is much the big different. Thing. Yes. So it's going to screw you up, because guess what, everybody? Grips. Grip, grip, city, bitch. Grip, city, bitch. <laughs> grip, grip, city, bitch. 
there are a ridiculous amount of grips that you're getting. Yes. Oh, Fair actually, enough. one more other thing you'll notice is the reload time drastically increased oh for God. ARs. 30% increase in reload time. That quick draw is going to matter. It matters now. Do not neglect it. Pick it up. You're going to want it. If you can find an extended quick draw, great. But if you pass up a quick draw, you're an idiot. Yep. It takes forever. If you are in a close quarters combat and you are trying to avoid somebody, you're going to have to run away to change your magazine. Yep. Yeah, it's that big of a deal. Like you think your game is like glitching or something because of how long it's taking to reload. Nope, that's just how it works now. So it's almost like the quick draw gets it back up to the speed of the previous reload before this change. Mm -hmm. So quickly, let's run down the bullets really quick. Um, pistols, they increase the damage of every single one of them. Shotguns, they increase the overall damage and the effective range, but the duckbills and the chokes do not reduce the spread as much as they used to do. And so the modifiers for that, it does more damage on limbs now than it did before instead of reducing the spread so you hit more core body. So that's kind of like the way that they balance that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. They reduce the pellet spread of, across the board, but not overall. And so the pellets don't spread as far, but the spread is not reduced as much on the choke. And you can put a shotgun choke on a sawed off. Not that many people use the sawed off. Whew. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, so I'll jump into SMGs. And we have to talk, obviously, the, the new grips and everything, too. Yep. Uh, but SMGs, like you just mentioned, they're going to be your friend. Um, and we don't have to get into every single detail here, but what you need to know is that the recoil is decreased, the damage is increased, and they're going to be a lot easier to use because they are going to be, if you will, imaginary buff, uh, imaginary additional buff because the ARs have been nerfed so hard. Yeah. So, so any close quarter combat, you're, you're going to want to use an SMG. You're going to want to switch. <laughs> yes. Just switch it over. Um, so your loadouts are no longer going to be AR, AR. It's not going to be M4, M4 anymore. It's not necessarily even going to be M4, Car 98 anymore. Mm -hmm. It might be Car 98 Ump. It might be SLR Vector. Yeah. Um, it might be, uh, you know, SKS and Shotgun. If I can get an SKS in a fully loaded Vector, I am golden. Yes. I would agree with you completely. So the reason that they 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 nerfed the ARs a bit, it was so that they made them more equal and you wouldn't always just try to pick up two M4s to make your life a lot easier. Yes. They did it so that you will have to choose your favorite one based on the way that it plays and you're going to want to pick up an SMG to accompany it until you find a sniper and then you choose to drop one or the other. Yep. And so they increased the, the recoil, horizontal and vertical. They decreased the recoil recovery rate. So even with the fact that the bullets are more spread apart now, it also takes longer for the weapon to reset. So mm -hmm. it's like this double whammy of more recoil and harder to use mechanics. And But what this does is, like I just said, it buffs the SMGs because now you're going to have trouble using those ARs and you're going to want to go to the SMGs because, for a couple reasons, they're more accurate, uh, they're easy to use because you can aim down sights a lot faster and uh, you can run faster with them too. Yeah. Um, and then they're just going to be overall better in short range combat. Exactly. And because of all the grips, you have to now choose accordingly what's going to work best for that weapon, not what your actual preference is. Exactly. Because you can't just snap one on and say you like it better. Some of them suck. Right. But here's the thing. Once you get down to all this other stuff, you have all this additional information that they're throwing at you. Um, they increased the damage of different quick, great weapons. Uh, they restricted the bigger scopes. Um, you can't put an 8X on an M4 anymore. Yep, it just doesn't work. 15Xs are super hard to find still, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and the reload speed um, for the crossbow has gone down by half a second, which actually is super noticeable if you're somebody who's ever tried to pick one up. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I think we can also mention DMRs here because along with the ARs being nerfed, like I said, DMRs get buffed too. Um, you can pick up uh, a DMR that has a slightly more damage. Um, so the VSS and the Mini 14 are, are one of those. They increase the recoil of the DMRs, but the offset by the increased bullet speed of the DMRs and the fact that uh, they are more powerful than the ARs. So it's almost like, not that ARs aren't completely useless anymore, but they look not as good. Yeah, they, they look not as good. If you can find a DMR, go with that. Yep. Uh, and they introduced the SLR, so you guys are going to get this 7.62 DMR now 
uh, which really packs a punch, but has so much recoil that you have to figure out how to use it accordingly. And you can't put a grip on it, too. You can't put a grip on it. It spawns in the world. Uh, 7.62 ammo, 10 bullets a magazine, 20 with an extended. It's super powerful. It packs a real hit, but it's hard to use. Yep, it does 58 damage per hit, which is the second most powerful DMR. The MK14, which is the care package weapon, does 61. Yep. Um, but again, all of this stuff aside, what are the things you're really going to notice? And one of those things is attachments. So DMRs now use AR attachments, and I thought this was a brilliant change, and I love everything about it. So, so if, if you get an extended quick draw mag for an AR, you can put that on your Mini 14 now. You can put it, it on your SKS now. You're still going to have the sniper extended, and you're, if you find an AR extended, you're going to want to take that because it gives you more. Yes. So you have the specific sniper mags, which you can put on the bolt action rifles, the M24 and the AWM. And, but then you can put, and you can still put them on the SKS as well, like you just said, uh, but you can now put the ARs on. So it makes it a lot easier to find a magazine that will work with your DMR, which instantly makes it a better weapon. So like going from uh, the mini 14 of 20 rounds up to 30, now all of a sudden you've got an M16 that's even better than an M16. You know, you have a more yeah. powerful, faster bullet velocity M16, and you don't have 20 rounds anymore. You have the extra 10 because extended AR rounds or extended AR mags are pretty easy to find. Yep. Um, and speaking of sniper rifles, I think we can also mention um, the M24 is now a world spawn. So this Which gives is you. Which cool. When yeah. you find it, you just get that little, like, okay, cool. I have something else that's not a Car 98 or an yes. SKS. Like, this feels good. It's another a car, it's a car 98 alternative. Yep. Feels good to use it. It's uh, it's pretty powerful. It gives you the trace bullet every time. So you feel you feel pretty comfortable with yep. it right off the bat. Good bullet speed uh, and does a one hit kill to the head. Yep. Um, so also note, level three helmets now only spawn in care packages and it's guaranteed to be in every single one. So don't be discouraged. We actually didn't find that much of a difference in the gameplay when it happened on PC. I, at first I thought that it would be, uh, but it's really not. Yeah. Uh, and I, I gotta say, I don't really miss it all that much finding the level threes everywhere. It helps uh, if you're someone who uses a bolt action rifle like me, um, you're going to be in a really good place because you'll know that nearly every single opponent you'll come against uh has a level two helmet and you can take them down in one hit yep. but as far as like it's not necessarily game changing so much um it it can be um but i i like this change but i don't think it's uh as, as crazy of a change as people initially thought it would be and, and what we initially thought it would be uh, but I, I definitely like it because i like being able to to have the confidence, the extra confidence with the, the bolt actions going against people. Yep. Um, they adjusted the casting time of the adrenaline syringe from um, eight to six seconds, but it also spawns alongside normal loot in the game now. So instead of just being a care package, it shows up in the world. And the tack stock and cheek pad are now less effective at improving recoil recovery rate, but improves ADS speed, and that is super noticeable. Yep. Um, they also uh, adjusted the weapon sway of all weapons, so the side-to-side -side movement. Uh, it's more now more pronounced when holding your breath. It isn't so rock steady as it used to be. Cheek pads now help you recover from weapon sway more quickly after moving, and uh, weapon sway when moving is also reduced by the cheek pad. Yep. So, yeah, I guess in sum, um, it's going to feel different. The game will feel different. M the M16 absolutely blows chunks now. Don't pick it up. It's awful. Um, SMGs are really good. You're going to want an ump. You're going to want a vector. Uh, ARs are still effective because they give you the full auto capability, but SMGs are still going to be better. And one of the main reasons that is is because you're going to use them up close full auto, and they have the limb multiplier that puts them, if you hit the arms and legs, up to the damage level of the ARs. And this is something that Clay talked about in uh, Discord today, which was that he's getting all the shout outs today. He's got like four shout outs now. Uh, and a million kills. <laughs> and a million kills. Very good player. Played with him. He was just beasting. Uh, but he was saying, like, if you're going to use your AR as a full auto and you're only going to use that full auto up close, you might as well just take the SMG because if you hit the arms and legs, you're going to deal more damage uh, and you're going to have less recoil and you're going to have faster aim down sights speed. Um, and your DMRs have been increased in both uh, usability because of the attachments can now be put on them uh, from ARs, 
Uh, but they are a little bit higher recoil, but I think that they've made them more viable and uh, made them more in line with uh, slash... No, that's that's a lie. I think they've made them better than the ARs because uh, they're more powerful than the ARs. And then the SRs, the only difference here is the M24 is now available to you in the world. Um, shotguns, I'm not even going to cover them. You have a duck bill attachment. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but now we have to talk about the grips because that is another factor on top of all these changes. So many grips. So, 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 so many grips. Um, okay, so how, the way that we should probably just go about this, we're going to talk about them one by one. Uh, we're going to ignore the duck bill. Vert vertical pellet spread. That's all you need to know. Doesn't matter. The light grip. Decreases first shot and single shot recoil by about 15%. All right. Animation kick reduction has been changed to 20% from 30. And it's attachable to ARs, SMGs, and DMRs. The thumb grip reduces vertical recoil, but increases horizontal recoil. It also increases recoil recovery time. So generally, um, it's good for a spray if you are trying to go to a moving target because it has a lot of um, horizontal recoil, but you don't have a lot of vertical recoil. So if you're just spraying across a room, through an open door, across a field, whatever, it's gonna work pretty okay for you. Um, the half grip reduces vertical and horizontal recoil. It also reduces recoil recovery time. This is my favorite grip. I like to put it on as many things as I can. Um, it's really versatile. It is not specifically the vert grip or specifically the ankled grip. It's a little bit of both, and you can have more control over the way you're using your weapon. Uh, additionally, they've added the 3X and they've added the 6X. They um, The 3 is not an adjustable scope. The 6, I believe, is an adjustable scope. Right, Dan? Goes from a 6 to it a is. 3. Yep. Yep. Um, and it says it's discoverable as a rare world drop item. You actually find it fairly often and it's a really cool grip. It is um, by far my favorite because it's, I liked the eight, but this uh, is more versatile because you can use it as a mid range or a long range weapon. Um, pick up the six X scope or the half grip anytime. Yes, for sure. So uh, that's a lot of information. <laughs> um, so what's the takeaway? Like what's, what's the best grip for what play style? Uh, uh, if you have a sniper rifle uh, or an, a marksman rifle, whatever, they can use a grip um, and you're doing single shots trying to, to snipe people out, use the light grip. It's going to work fairly well for you because it helps with um, first shot and single shot recoils. Uh, the half grip is going to help you out universally uh, with something because it helps with vertical and in horizontal. Yep, exactly. So if you're one tapping, lightweight, half grip for spraying and bursting. Uh, and if you can't find a half grip, your next best option is going to be the angled um, and then the vertical. So uh, basically, if you're if you're doing full auto fire like me, I'm going to be doing half grip as most I can and then probably the angled after that. So even though they've added all of these grips, like the takeaway is that like the vertical and angled grips are still very good. Yeah, but um, they're more static now than they were before because the vert grip... Um, is for vertical recoil only, does nothing right. for horizontal. Yeah. Um, angle does nothing for vertical and is only horizontal. But um, it also depends on like what weapon you're putting on. And and I think also the thumb grip, which we don't talk about too much and people don't seem to use it a lot. Th the benefit of that is that you can aim down sights a lot faster. Yeah. At least that's what it seems like. And I have to double check a video on that to make sure that I'm correct here. But when I put a thumb grip on an ump, I was pulling it up as if like there was no delay whatsoever. Yeah. So there's some other benefits here as well outside of just, you know, bullet location after firing and, and, and type of, of play style. Right. All right. Moving on into throwables. Moving on into throwables. You got this. I got this. All right. So... Frag grenades, stun grenades, they made improvements. Um, they did some stuff. Basically, they made them heavier, so you can't carry as many as, as many in your bag. They also increased the damage and effective range of frag grenades. Um, they now deal lethal damage within 3.5 meters and moderate damage from 3.5 meters through 8.5 meters and low damage for anything after that. Past 10 meters, they're not effective. 
Stun grenades actually do something now. Um, there's a direct effect and an indirect effect. So basically, if you are looking at the grenade, it's going to be the direct effect. But even if it explodes behind you or within a radius of 5.5 meters of you, you will still be indirectly affected by that stun grenade. So they do a little bit more. I still find myself not really using them. No, uh, but when you get hit by one, you notice it. Exactly. You notice it and you notice it with your enemies because there's a new animation where the player holds up their hand to their face. Yep. Which, again, could be a problem if we don't have limb penetration because suddenly the hand is blocking the headshot. But that's that's going to be fixed soon. Uh, Molotov cocktails also have new effects, and they deal indirect damage and burn damage, which is damage over time, depending on whether or not you're standing directly in the flames. Um, after you catch fire, you take burn damage as damage over time, and you will be unable to aim down sights when taking this damage. Flames now spread further along wooden houses and uh, wooden surfaces in houses. And uh, they spread further if another Molotov is thrown on top of the flame. So you could double up the flames and get a pretty big spread of fire. And it does spread and it does hurt. It does a lot of damage. There is no just stop, drop, and roll. We tested this. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, and there's also a new animation. When you're on fire, It will your character will pat out the flames if you're in third yep. person. So that's pretty much it. Um, grenades are effective. i am always been a high proponent of using grenades like thumbs up all the way i keep two or three at all times they scare people they flush people out of cover um they are loud and your screen shakes and they're scary and if people are playing scared it's a really good way to to scare them further into making a mistake um and molotov cocktails are also more effective now even though they give away your location with a trail of fire they they do flush out people very well and they do a lot of damage now and you can stack them Stun grenades, still not convinced about, uh, but they have been improved. I still don't think they're worth the amount of time it takes out. It takes to pull them out and throw them, even though the the cook time is only like two seconds or something like that. You can throw them a little bit faster, but I still uh, the risk of flashing yourself due to desync or other problems in this game is just too high for me to recommend using them. Good call, good call. Uh, they decrease movement speed when holding. Uh sniper rifles and lmgs and shotguns uh it'll affect your sprinting speed when you're running um they removed the first shot delay when your character isn't sprinting chambering a new round in certain weapons uh no longer limits you to the walking speed while aiming down sights and your the amount your camera shakes after being shot aim punch now depends on the amount of damage you receive so you will react more to more direct damage and less to more indirect damage exactly so boat and swimming adjustments, this is something we talked about a little bit ago on, on Discord. Um, it was something we saw in tournaments where people would hide underwater because it's safe there and you couldn't really get hit. But now what they've done is they've decreased the maximum submersible, submersible time um, from 35 seconds to 15 seconds. That's a pretty massive difference. So you can no longer stay underwater for a really long time and be safe from your enemies shooting at you. Once you run out of air, you'll now take 10 damage per second which is up from four damage per second. And they increased the delay for breath recovery time from one to four seconds. So in other words, when you lift your head out of the water, it will now take four seconds before you begin to recover your breath. So it makes going into water something you might want to think about a little it's more not before as you jump as in. It used to be. You're yeah. going to need a bigger boat that exactly. now sinks when it's blown up. And now sinks when it's destroyed. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can spectate your killer by cr clicking the watch button now, so that's cool. Uh, we don't really do it that often in squads because it kind of holds things up. But in solo, if you want to watch that person, like that uh, that game where you can wear all the, the cow suits and not aim down sights, that's, uh, that's definitely like that now. Yeah, for sure. And uh, there's no death cam, though. This is just solo killer spectating or duo squad killer spectating. You still can't see who killed you and how but you can spectate. And I feel like that has to do with performance issues and, and yeah. problems on the Xbox, but they, PC I mean, has they, had it for a long time. They can't render that stuff in now, though. They can't do it fast Even enough, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Even with ours, it's not rendered in in time, and you're just watching an, like a go, like an invisible An invisible person, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
all window bars, uh, windows with bars have had the glass removed on Erangel now, and they've added 26 graffiti images to buildings in Erangel and Miramar. Watch out because some of them make it look like somebody is firing at you from around a corner. <laughs> yeah, graffiti of, of a person yeah. with their gun on you. It's really bad. You can also see the flight path now prior to getting in the plane. You will see where the, the path's going to be. You will not see the circle, but you will see the path. So it's cool. You know where you can land. You can plot out your stuff beforehand. Yep. It's very helpful. Very helpful. Um, you can change those reticles, but we know that. Yeah, we, we talked about that. this. Uh, well, we will talk about this in a couple minutes when John makes great points. But you can change the reticles of red dots uh, to give you a whole bunch of different options. The red dot, a green dot. Uh, chevron, a regular crosshair with a dot in the middle, a T, uh, all of these you can cycle through. And you can also increase the brightness of the reticles as well. Some sound performance. Um, they've introduced uh, different ways so that it's more realistic. Uh, Head-related transfer function. Uh, it allows for you to identify movement and sounds coming from different directions more easily, right? Yeah, like that's the, exactly. That's, just, that's, that's the, the quickest it. way to do it. Mm-hmm. It works on most headsets. If it doesn't, flip it back and you'll be in the same spot you were before. Yep. Um, they've added a little bit better performance in some of the smaller things. Uh, character model rendering, movement speeds and animations are smoother. Um, network code so that the latency isn't uh, as bad. It's still bad, but it's not as bad. Um, bike animations scoping has been optimized so the frame rate should no longer decrease when scoping into forests because they have to render more things um and smoke effects uh have been optimized and that one was also noticeable so yep for sure and that was the big daddy big dog big daddy uh, big dog this just hit today um so go and get on that test server it's probably going to be pushed to live in the next couple of weeks but you can just get in there now and, and get your hands on it. Report the bugs. Uh, help make this game better. Yeah, that's a lot of inf- information. And if you want to hear all of this again and also hear John's take on all of these things, go back and listen to episode 37 of Hot Drop. And we basically run through all of these patch notes uh, together again. So you can hear more about these grips and what we think of them. Uh, but we did that before we started playing. So I think this episode actually has a lot of good takeaways uh, about these changes and hopefully gives you some advice about what to use going forward. For sure. Man, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Gameplay tip. Gameplay tip. So this one, I think this is a great tip and something John didn't know for a really long time. I schooled him on this. I made a great point for once. Uh, when you're using a bolt action rifle, if you're zooming in and you're shooting and you're not really sure where your bullets are hitting, what you can do is click and hold. And when you click and hold, you'll remain zoomed in and you'll see the bullet travel. You'll see where it hits. And then you have a better way of adjusting your second follow-up shot. So click and hold with bolt action rifles. Pull and hold, Dan. It's a trigger. Pull and hold. Pull and hold. Beauty. This is John makes a great point. Here's John. <laughs> I ruined it. Damn it. <laughs> it sounded Fuck. like kind of a snare when you guys talked together like that. It was like. <laughs> That's Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we here to talk about? Uh, scopes and aiming. Uh, this was a discussion in Discord today, as well as a question from the downward spiral. Spiral. The downward what? spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Just left the R out. Um, so, I think there's an update coming from for Xbox that includes the new gunplay. Um, right, it's the gun yeah. patch. The yeah, John, we've patch. already talked about it because this is live. Watch the podcast, John. <laughs> you guys don't bring me in for that, so I don't know what you <laughs> talked about already. We tried, but we're always like, oh, yeah, your segment, I want my own segment, I want my own spotlight. I don't want the whole thing. It's 133%, I don't want 50. 
You progressively are turning into a bad Cartman. <laughs> into what? A bad Cartman. Come on, Cal. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I sound like. <laughs> it sounds about right. Well, and you have your evil cackle too. Your <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the hell. Yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Oh, tune into our live stream. You'll hear all about that. It's just, it's great. It's beautiful. All right, so scopes. <laughs> so what are we here no, to talk about? <laughs> live stream and our Discord. Discord. <laughs> so anyway. Xbox is getting a new patch with the new scopes, so and we had some questions related to it, so I figured we should talk about aiming scopes, that kind of thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so the new things about scopes coming to Xbox that would be the 3x, the 6x, uh, as well as some minor changes. Are those going to be available on this patch as well, like the color and reticle stuff? They are indeed. It's all of this. It's all. Do you want to talk about good, that good. stuff? Yeah, so we talked about it a little bit earlier, but let's let's hit it again. <laughs> uh, so you've got your your four X and your two X and your eight X. Those are your bread and butter, as we say. Uh, you've been using these for a while. You also have the fifteen X, which is completely useless and maybe only found. I think I've found it probably five times ever, maximum. Yeah, you don't. I don't you think don't I've find ever it. found it. it. Let alone have a chance to use it. It's just too much. Too many X's. Um, so the changes in this patch include the addition of the 6X and the 3X, as well as some changes to reticles. And these reticles are on the, the red dot specifically. Um, you've got uh, a couple of changes. You can cycle through the different, uh, different looks. You've got just the regular red dot. You can change it to green. Then there's like a triangle looking thing. There's the classic crosshair, the plus with the dot in the middle of it. And then there's a, a plus without the top hash line. Uh, I'm not really sure what you'd call that. Um, and you can, a, T? A, a T? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's an upside down. So it's like horizontal, horizontal, and the bottom Te- line. A Tetris piece, then. Yeah. Well, I guess it is a T. Yeah, it's a T. It is a I'm, T. I'm an idiot. It's a T. Um, and then you've got, on the 2X, you have the red option for the just the circle with the dot. You can't change the the actual shape of the reticle, but you can change the color. And you can change the intensity as well. Uh, you can increase the brightness. So what do you, I know you changed some stuff. What do you use? So I use uh, red for the 2X. I don't know why, I just like it more. There's really no, sure. no good reason. Uh, and then for the red dot, when I use it, I still am a hollow guy. I don't, I don't really know why. I just, I really prefer the hollow cause I like that reticle. Um, no, but when so. I, when I do use the red dot, I use the, the plus with the dot and there's, I think that there's a big negative to that one. And I think it covers up your target a little bit too much sometimes. Um, but I, and so that for that reason, I also like the classic red dot or, or, yeah, or green dot. But I don't like the uh, the triangle, the the pointed triangle at all. I really don't like that one, mm-hmm. the chevron. The like chevron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a fan. Uh, but I do cool. find that the colors do make a difference. And you'd think cycling between red and green is like eh, whatever. It's personal preference. But I don't remember which one. But on Sanok Savage Funky Chicken, I definitely notice a difference between one of the colors being very difficult to see against the background. And I, yeah, I probably was the green one. That's why I used yeah, the that, red. I still use the green reticle, but at first it, it was very difficult to adjust to because of the, the it was so green. Yeah. All, like that whole map is just green, 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 green. But mm-hmm. um, Oh, it's also against the sky to... too. Against the sky, it's very difficult to see. I've lost mine uh, against the sky. I, I don't use it any different ones, but with a red dot, actually. Um, like I think it's when it's super bright out. I don't remember maybe sunrise or something like that on Aaron I just, I was shooting a guy who was, you know, backed by the sky and I completely lost my, my radical mm. crosshair. It was horrible. Yeah. So what do so you this is important to talk by the way? About? I just want to ask, cause I know you started yeah. talking and I cut you off. Who are you talking to? You, you homie. What are you saying? What do you like? Oh. What radicals do you like? I like the little chevron triangle thing, green. Oh, you do. Interesting. That's that's it's my jammy jam. It's the opposite yeah. of what I like. Complete opposite yeah. in all ways. I like it. It gives me a nice, nice angled point to work okay. with. 
Okay, Amen. not to bring it back to CSGO, but the nice thing that they have in there is the ability to customize the color with RGB, and you can yes. do outline and interior color. So I, I always had it a white crosshair with a black outline. I'm right there with and you. And that, yeah, that's pretty much what, uh, it's what a lot of people, some people use green because of old whatever. Um but it lets it be visible on every surface. Yeah. So that's it's very handy. But it doesn't uh, have the dot in the middle on, on CS, which is what I like. So I, I did. Oh, I, you did? I, oh, I took I mine out. the dot on it. CL crosshair dot zero. Yeah. No, yeah. I had the dot and the plus. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, Enough reticle talk. What do we got? All right. So I think the first thing we want to jump into is when to use which scopes. Um, and I think we can cross them off the list pretty quickly. And it does depend on the weapon that you're using. For sure. But, um, like, for ARs, I think anything up to the... I think I, I prefer, personally, two or three. And then if you're fighting in a long distance, maybe a four. Um, some people can use higher than that. But really... At the higher X's, you get so much bullet drop if you're shooting from that distance. That's not really that helpful, I think. Like, it's kind of an indicator that you're shooting too far. And your your bullets probably aren't doing as much damage as you want them to. Mm. Um, it's also map dependent. And uh, I think the, the 6 and the 8 is really good on Miramar, especially. Oh, and yeah. there are some places um, on Erangel where it's nice. But you mm -hmm. really don't want much above a four on uh, Sinoc. Oh my god, even a four sometimes is too much. Unless you're aiming down those hills, um, yeah. you don't want a four, you want a three. Uh, but it's always nice to have a four handy, because you're going to find that weird shot. It's, what I found is it's, it's, it's more difficult to get into a firefight if you let them get closer when you have a scope. So a lot of times I find that it's more difficult to spot where shots are coming from on Sanok because of all the tree cover. And so if, lot, somebody yeah. has, if somebody has a bead on you with a 4X or you have a bead on somebody else with a 4X, chances are they're not going to know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But if you get close enough, you have less of a chance of surviving a close quarters combat um, fight than you would have on Miramar or Erangel. Mm -hmm. And so right. it's better to have that 4X to be able to take a couple of shots from further away and then wait for them to get closer if you need to. Because you can see them coming once you spot them for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I yeah. think it does. The only... I feel like too often we see people like, say, 200 meters away. I want to take a shot because if they get too close, you I feel like everybody converges onto one spot all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only times when I would want anything more than a four would be when you're on one of those terraced hills and you're looking across the way at to like another, another hill. hill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a couple of times like that or when you're on a hill looking down towards the beach or something. But yeah. because there's so few of those areas, um, you're typically going to want the four X more often than the eight. Right. Six and is, that... is still doable because you can scroll down and get it down to a four. Well, the eight scrolls down to what? No, actually, the eight scrolls down to a four I think as well. Eight scrolls down to a yeah to a four. But I I love the eight on Aaron Gill. Love it. Me too, for sure. See, I never I never got used to the eight because it was so uncommon to find, and like Dano liked it right away, basically. So I stuck with the four most of the time. Yeah, but you're a essentially just like a, a sniper god with the four. So here's the thing, and I've realized this kind of in the last six months or so, is I am pretty good with the sniper, but only up to, like, medium-high range. So, like, maybe 200 meters, I can still hit the shots pretty consistently. But, like, at actual sniper distance, like, where you get um, huge AR drop-off, I'm not, I'm not that great with my accuracy. And it's probably because I've stuck with the Forex. So I have this, like really good ability to take heads on people who are medium range who are shooting me with an AR and I have a Carnandiate or sniper or whatever. But anything beyond that, I'm actually not the best sniper. Um, but you that's why really well I, too, which helps you. Right. And that comes from just like training and also playing like 
first person shooters like yeah. Counter Strike, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. It kind of lets you like the other thing I do. Um, I think my movement is solid once I take a shot. Normally, it's a little bit harder to do on first person. I think, but turning like as soon as you take the shot, you don't wait to see if it hit. Like if they're shooting at you, that you is can't... something I'm starting to come out of. Because I wanted to get good at it, and so you want to check how you're doing. Mm-hmm. But if you check how you're doing, you're gonna fucking die. <laughs> right, especially if you're against somebody who also has a sniper. Uh huh. So there's a lot of like, you'll see me fire and then like turn and maybe like crouch behind some cover right away, uh, and it's just to kind of evade where the enemy might take a shot from. Uh, but yeah, personally, since I use the 4X so much, I prefer the 4X. I'll zoom the 6 and the 8 out to 4, and I'll only zoom it back in if I'm like trying to spot something in particular. But if I'm taking a shot, I usually have it out to a 4, even on Aaron Gill or Miramar. Um, and I don't, uh, for snipers, I don't like the 3X. I hate the 3X for it. I would rather it's put a 2X good, on it. Yeah. Everybody, so here, I wouldn't rather put it to, but I just like it's not as useful, and you want to take a fight with an AR instead. Yeah. Yeah. My issue with the three is the, the stupid reticle. I can't stand it. It's not good yeah. for an AR. It's not good for a sniper. I don't know. I, think it's I don't know okay how to use it. AR. It's too busy. Yeah. It's very busy. I it's agree. only okay for an AR. I wouldn't put it on an SMG either. But oh, if okay. I knew how to use it, maybe, but I still like. I, I, this might bleed into our next conversation, which is all about zeroing. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I just I just don't like the look of the three. I also think the three is very tinted, and people some people agree oh, with yeah. me, some people don't. But it seems way darker than all yeah, of the other scopes, mm-hmm. especially on Sanok where it's kind of bright or brighter. Or when the fog rolls in and it's kind of dark, you pull it up and it's even darker uh, than than the fog already makes the yeah. world. So real quick, as we're talking about which scopes to use, I want to bring up a tip that Clay Dash Dash um, mentioned in the Discord this morning as we are discussing this. Um, he said he keeps his loadout like exactly how he wants it. So his number one gun is his close range, I believe, and his number two gu- gun is is his like single fire. And he uses DMRs and ARs specifically. Um, and this makes it so that he's not switching scopes on things sometimes Mm. i'll take a fire with my sniper rifle with a 4x or something like that maybe tag a guy and then have to switch scopes to an ar to try and follow up because i know i'm not going to necessarily hit him when he's moving something along those lines again i'm not the best from distance so sometimes i'll switch my 4x to my ar and the way he plays is he makes sure that the single fire gun has the long range scope and his short range gun, whether it be like an SMG or a, a rifle set to automatic, uh, has a lower X, like a red dot, a 2X or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is a very good tip. It makes it consistent in your head so that your fingers know exactly what to select. You see a guy close range, you know what gun you need to have out. You know that the right scope is already on it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, I think that consistency is really helpful. Yeah, definitely. And that goes into our smart. (laughs) That was Clay, man. That goes into our topic, uh, our tip. Talking to Clay, John. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Where uh, you want to put your longer rifle in your slot number two? Okay, so tell the draw animation. The draw animation. Right. Exactly. So if you have a, a long, physically long, lengthy rifle, girthy rifle, even in your first slot. It's on the right side of your backpack if you're in third person. And the character animation takes the right hand and pulls it over their right shoulder and then grabs the rifle. So when they pull it up and over their head, the rifle like sticks out, you know, like four feet mm-hmm. past the character's head. So it's a, a really good idea to put that long rifle in the number two slot on the left side of your backpack because the draw animation comes out from underneath the left shoulder. Mm. So it's a, less of a, a giveaway if you're, you know, sneaking and peaking top five situation um it's a little thing but i think it's something to think about oh it's pretty cool um the other thing that i want to another just quick tip that a lot of people don't think of and this comes from my counter-strike days is you want to especially when you're sniping uh and quick scoping is for sure 
you want to kind of get a feeling of where the center of your screen is, like where your rifle is going to point when you aim down sights, because this will help you get those headshots easier. You don't want to zoom in and have to readjust your aim much uh, if you are going for that quick scope. So you want to be able to basically, in third person or first person, not ADS, you want to be able to look at the person center them on your screen as much as you can, then aim down sights mm. so that the reticle is as close to their head or body, but preferably their head as possible. So you don't have to make large movements as soon as you zoom in. Mm -hmm. That way you can just snap to their head real quick, maybe adjust a little bit and then fire and you should get a pretty fast shot off. Totes. That's that's a fucking great point, John. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's something that's so that natural to me. so bad? It could be. <laughs> it could be. I just mean it's so natural to us, but like, yeah, like you're going to aim slower when you're aiming down sights and you're, you know, you're looking and you're trying to line it up after the fact. Like you get it as close as you can before you click that right mouse button or hold it yeah. or whatever you do or your, your left trigger if you're on Xbox. Um, yeah, get it halfway lined up or three quarters lined up before you even aim down sights. Yeah, and that that kind of like snapping onto people is really useful in any firefight it's not just for sniper rifles but if you're if you're suddenly this has happened before uh i remember a game i think dano and i was just playing duos and a guy uh i think dano went down from a guy far away who i killed and then i was reviving him and started getting shot by a guy with an ar and i was able to turn around and snap to his head and take the shot almost immediately and it's solely because of that the only reason i could do it is because i was able to center his head aim down sights immediately and then fire hmm. yeah that's a really good tip I, that's one of those things that i would never think to to say because I've, it comes so natural but it's a really good one it's something that i saw uh i think i heard it and realized that we were doing it naturally in, in during like a csgo tournament for like really good om users or mm -hmm. not om, awp in counter-strike uh that they they have really accurate aim without aiming down sights mm, uh, yeah and it, it, it's very helpful so yeah i've used that one uh the other thing dan you want to talk about crosshair placement real quick yeah i think i brought this up forever ago on one mm -hmm. of one of the episodes i was doing when i was talking about gameplay um yeah it's sort of it's, it's all about putting your crosshair where you expect someone to be. And it's not quite as crucial in this game because there you're not in a set sandbox of a map. Or I should say you're not in a maze of a map like you are in Counter-Strike or pretty much any other shooter that has a small enclosed space. You're in an open world. Uh, but at the same time, you, you definitely can use this tip because, you know, you can visually, you know, in your head eliminate angles as you're walking through a certain area um, and you have a good idea of you know again going back to another tip we said which was talk to each other and call out where guys mm -hmm. might be as you progress and clear out an area um, get your crosshair on those areas like don't be looking at your feet don't look up in the sky like don't just be looking around but having your gun pointed somewhere where an enemy <laughs> won't be because you're going to be in, in some cases multiple seconds behind them if you're playing, for example, a third person match and they've already spotted you and all they have to do is step out of cover and poop, poop, you're dead. And if you had your crosshair sort of where that cover is, where they might be, you might have a chance to return fire and possibly take them out, even though they had seen you first and gotten the one up on you. So this is this is really uh, it's really useful in Counter-Strike where you kind of know how the players stand and you can aim for the head at all times yeah. but it's there's a couple of really good examples of when to use this one is when you're peeking out from behind a tree or out from behind uh, like half cover where you can stand up and crouch and aim at somebody crouch back down and if you just like uncrouch again then your crosshair should be on their head right it, so if they don't move and you've already taken aim then you can basically get a really easy shot on them the other thing is leaning because that distance is static, if you lean out, aim, lean back in, lean out again, and then just quick fire as soon as you hit the max of the lean, then you can uh, you can make really quick shots on people's head 
without giving them a lot of space to shoot you back. Totally. Interesting. Yeah. And like clearing out a house is a good example of when this is really important um, because you're going to walk through the front door and you're going to have a, a left turn or a right turn. Usually you look left, look right. Uh, but as you proceed through the rooms, um, if you have played Aaron Gell for a really long time, you know the layout of every single house in the map. So you can expect, okay, people are going to be in the bathrooms or people are going to be um, upstairs on that balcony, the house with the roof, like we call it. Um, the and, or they're going to be in the stairwell. Uh, the stairwells seem to be pretty popular places to fight or at the top of the stairs. Um, so for example, if you're walking into one of those houses that has a steep stairway, um, there's that cluster of four houses uh, in Yaz, in Yaznaya that are just like right next to each other. We always drop there every single time we go. And uh, the front door opens and you're looking at a staircase that's pretty st straight up. So for example, if you know someone's in there and they're going to be at the top of the stairs looking down, what you can do if you're playing third person is you can sort of peek with your camera without exposing your body, get a feel for where they are, because some players might just stand there in the, the doorway at the top of the stairs, wide open, just like lot. waiting for you to step out. But you have the advantage here because you can sort of line up your aim already uh, without giving away your, your body. So what you can do is just look up at them and then just sidestep out or lean and pop them in the face. Pop, pop. Yeah. So it's all about, yeah, predictive crosshair placement. The other thing is like when you're going up the stairs that like take a turn and go the other way, like they go up and then around. Mm -hmm. I see I see people sometimes like look at the wall that they're going up the stairs and then when they get there, they turn like left and then left again and then they go up the stairs and start looking for people. You can start looking for people at the bottom of the stairs and you should because probably somebody's going to be leaning over the balcony or at the top of the stairs. So if you start clearing those angles as soon as you hit the bottom of the stairs, sure, someone might peek you after you've cleared it and hit you. But the good thing is you're not looking at a wall. Right. So that And the, another good place to use this is um, when you're looting. I see I, I do this, too, but like looking down when you're looting you're not going to see enemies that way so people can more easily sneak up on you uh that's it's hard to not do but if you tab loot a lot then you can kind of keep your eyes straight and get loot still um yeah if you're pressing f to loot you're going to be looking down every single time you press, press yeah button. so you can you don't have to do this 100 percent of the time like you can look down and loot if you know no one's around you but as soon as you start hearing people I would say start like making sure that you are looking up at where people are going to be rather than staring at the floor trying to pick something up. Exactly. And make sure when you're looting, uh, if you if so, if a group of you down one guy, all of you should go over there and loot the same box at the loot same, the same time. box. Uh, all of you should look at the ground um, uh -huh. and uh, wait for the enemy inventory. teammates grenade to come in and take you out. That's uh -huh. that's a, a key. Except the hero who's looting elsewhere comes back and saves everybody. Named right. Cody. Of course. Named Cody. All right. Last tip, I think, um, is don't zero. Hot take. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about this, Dano or Cody? Do yeah, Cody. Do you what have do you any think about zeroing? This, Cody? Do you ever do this? So, as somebody who used to zero because it made me a little bit more accurate, um, as you get better at the game you can't zero anymore because you take up way too much time and it's not worth doing so. Um, my aim, while still shitty, uh, got a lot better when I stopped trying to zero and guess how far people were. Mm -hmm. um, it's not worth your time. It slows your game down. It slows your reaction time down. And it would only work if people stayed stationary, which nobody does in this game. Yes. Right. Nailed it. And I have something to add. Um, sure. Which is... So bullet drop, significant bullet drop, where you're going to notice a difference between a headshot and a chest shot, only happens past 250, 300 meters. And the chance of you hitting someone from that distance and getting the kill on them with one hit is pretty slim, unless they're standing still. And so the time that you take to look at your map, kind of figure out exactly, okay, they are at this rock, and this rock shows up on my map, so I know I have to zero at the 300 meters away that that rock is to me. And then I sit still, I get it lined up, put my map away, um, pull up the scope, hold my breath. They're already gone by that time. Like yeah. you're just, you're wasting your time. Um, 
when all that you needed to do, if they were say 300 meters away or 200 meters away would be to just stand still. As soon as you see them, if they're standing still themselves, pull up your weapon, hold your breath, take the shot and your bullet's not going to drop that much. Like it's really not going to drop that much. The only time I could possibly see you zeroing if, is if they were 500, 600 meters away, and at which point the bullet's going to take so long to get there that they're, they're going to be, be gone. gone. They're going to be gone either way. Exactly. So yeah. you're, you're totally wasting your time. Yeah. My, my take for this is just consistency. Um, you don't want to, everybody's at a variable distance away from you. So you're not going to zero to 200 and then be like, I only fight people 200 meters away. <laughs> yeah. Like that's just not what's going to happen. So you're inevitably going to have to change that, which means getting used to whatever the range is or in including changing your, um, your zeroing, which yeah. takes time as we've discussed. So if you just get used to the gun, get used to the bullet drop that's there, you can easily aim like aim higher pretty close to where yeah like you, you see you get like a body shot then aim a little bit higher or just same keep hitting higher. the body yeah, yeah the same higher so bro. It, it's just i'm a big fan of doing things the same way in order to improve your results right like if if you want to get used to your mouse you got to have the sensitivity at the same value the whole time right you get used to that then you get better with it same with zeroing. You stay at whatever the baseline zero is, then you start feeling what how the guns drop, what the distances are. It's it's way better for you in the long run than uh, spending time trying to zero and get that perfect headshot. Right. And on top of that, the scopes, If so I'm going to spread some misinformation or lack of information because I don't know, but I know the scopes have little those little hash marks on them. Um, so I remember one time when I was trying to line up a shot on someone who was really far away from me and I had an 8x, and it has those little dashed lines on the bottom, you know, vertical part yep. of the scope. So like that is there for a reason. So if you guys want to take some time and, and put some effort into learning how exactly those work, you can use those to help you out. But every single time that I try to take a shot where I know it's probably a little bit farther than my reticle is going to, to put me as, you know, as an accurate shot. So like, does that make sense? I guess like, so yeah. if I line up with the head, if I feel like they're a bit farther beyond that and I need to aim up a little bit, I just aim up a little bit, just aim higher, yeah. bro. And so yeah. basically <laughs> also an another tip that we shared earlier, which was when you fire a bolt action rifle, hold down your mouse button after you shoot it or hold down your trigger on your Xbox controller. And you're going to get a chance to see that bullet travel and see where it lands and then adjust your follow-up shot after that. But it, that's way, way faster than trying to zero uh, and trying to gauge exactly where your shot's going to be based on some random number that you put into the zeroing dial. Right. So, yeah, I, I think the, the takeaway for that set is just be consistent about it. Um, and, like... I brought us sensitivity because I think it's really helpful. We generally use lower sensitivity and keep it consistent, uh, and that'll help you in the long run. Um, I think I think that pretty much does it. Is there anything else we want to bring up? No. I love I, I love the it. bold action tip. That's that's super helpful. When yeah. you told me that, it blew my mind, and then I suddenly started being able to hit people at 300 away. Yeah. It takes eight shots or whatever, but I can hit them. Yeah. And it's tough. They're they're difficult weapons to use, and they're punishing if you miss. But like you said, the that one hit potential is just what puts it head and shoulders above every other weapon. And I'll take it every single time. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're not comfortable with that, and Cody, you're like you're getting better with the with the bolt actions, but you're not always comfortable with the Car 98. So it's not a bad idea to get a rifle and put a 4x or a 6x on it, and just use that single fire. Like it was uh, the like M Clay's it was the M4 at first. You try the M4 and. As you get better, you move on to something that's got a higher skill ceiling. Yeah. Use the DMRs. Those things are actually pretty yeah, sick. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, it went from M4 to the Mini. Yeah. Uh, and then um, the SKS and then the Car 98. So. Yeah. And the SLR now, now just like packs a wallet. It's... It does. I don't like it that much, but you're right. It does. Yeah. It hurts. And one more tip before we wrap up, I think, <laughs> is um, crouch before you shoot. And I've, I learned this from war mode from all those drops and using like the M249. Um, 
I found myself way more accurate if I just crouch. So if you get the beat on someone and you're, you have the safety of being able to crouch and you don't need to move around too much, uh, to evade fire, definitely crouch lay down. Eh, could do another episode on that maybe, but, uh, yeah, crouch when you can, and you're going to be a lot more accurate, especially with your auto sprays. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. This has been me, John, making an accurate point. Hey, Lambo. You are now entering the personal computer place. <laughs> so this is kind of like a sandwiching uh, piece here, guys. Uh, there was war mode last week, um, and it was awesome. Yeah. Would you say that this takes the spot as the number one favorite war mode so far? It, in order, it it it. It, this and then the the first one mm-hmm. and everything else is tied for shit this is awesome because it almost gives you a little bit of a goal because you yeah. drop in with a shotgun and then the care packages start coming in it is fun as hell and it you have a reason to Huntsman. fight it is called huntsman and marksman it ran from the fifth to the eighth um you had uh smaller teams uh squads of five it was awesome you had a shotgun a handgun a frag grenade bandages all right care packages every 110 seconds and had dmrs and sniper rifles and other like you know healing items um it was so much fun and so fast-paced and everybody got a lot of kills because they were shotguns it was the most fun and matches always went to the end it gets people clustered up and that's what the shotguns do like previous war modes if you're dropping with snipers you're gonna have people on the outskirts and you're gonna have problems figuring out where you're getting hit from but this it's like as soon as those care packages hit the ground and the smoke comes up, people see it from the plane and they go right for those care packages every single time. Yeah. And so it's one so of the, hot. One of the differences in this one is that uh, friendly fire was disabled. So that you was don't a big one worry about that. It was awesome. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, you found yourself picking people up again. Um, it was, it was a good time. Yeah. Uh, really good time. And guess what? Good news. It's back. Uh, starting yesterday. Uh, when, now that you guys are listening to this, um, thursday for those of you who are listening later through what sunday i don't remember sunday yep yeah through sunday you get to play this exact same thing again so get on there play this thing it is so much fun i love love it it. yeah let's get some squads together we're going to be playing thursday night um so if you guys are around uh jump in jump in with us it's thursday and sunday it's only um five man squads which kind of sucks but i think it works for this game mode i don't i'm i wasn't hating on it but it is nice when it's 10 because we can get a lot of people together uh, yep. and do it all as a group. Yeah. So we've also got update number 17. Um, it's not much, but here it is. All right. Uh, they've introduced uh, the PUBG Global Invitational. Um, what am I? What word am I looking UI, for? UI, I guess. Visual UI. Uh, menu. You know, it's, yeah. it's a theme, I guess. Um, it looks cool. You know, uh, the shadows, the textures, it looks pretty neat. It's not useful. It just looks cool. Yeah. Um, when matchmaking, the game will now display the estimated wait time for finding a match. That's helpful, I guess. Not that we had much, you know, usually you hit ready and you're in. But yeah, whatever. right. Uh, visual improvements. Uh, they made the ruins look better. or Well, more detailed. They added shitty things to it. They <laughs> added cracked bells, rubble piles, uh, and a different cap on the central palace. So, uh, yeah. Cliffs and rocks have also been enhanced to look a little bit better. Uh, they fixed an issue where crossbow reticles were misaligned, which we noticed uh, also with the uh, QBZ before. Uh, they fixed an issue where some terrain Sanak could be passed through as if it weren't there. And they fixed few objects in Sanak and Miramar that were obstructing character movement, which isn't super detailed and very vague. But um, that is it. That is update number 17. Yeah. Uh, quick, fast, to the point. V fast. And this came out July 3rd. And then on July 11th, which is today, mm-hmm. they did patch 17.1, which is weirdly the same size, very small. <laughs> uh, it's to the test server. So, um, 
they wanted to talk about two issues from the most recent patch, 17, that they had already resolved with hotfixes. So they discovered that planned server optimizations for Sanok had not been properly applied, so they resolved that with a hotfix. And then there was also an issue preventing ping-based matchmaking in North America servers, so they resolved that with a hotfix too. So if you notice that there was a lot of desync and lag and characters bouncing around, uh, it was probably because there are people in very high pings uh, being in the NA servers. Um, so this is a, a test server update, uh, but there are a few patch notes here. They improved the off-road driving performance of the pickup truck. The iron sight default zeroing for all SMGs is now 100. Don't say what it was before, but I didn't really have a problem with this, with whatever it was. The crossbow zeroing will always be 25 meters, even with a scope attached. I think that's helpful if for some reason you ever use a scope on the crossbow. Um, and they also fixed issues, uh, one being that the wrong 4X reticle was used on the SLR. So previously it was the Chevron, the type of reticle that you yeah. see with the, the 5.56 rifles, but they changed it to the cross type that you see if you put it on the 4X, uh, put it on the Car 98, excuse me. Uh, and they also fixed an issue preventing you from being able to aim right away after switching over from the driver's seat. I haven't noticed that. No. And then they have some some notes here. Um, there's one other bug fix that they will ship before this update comes to live servers, and it has to do with an issue that's sometimes preventing players from being able to revive teammates. This is that's big. That's a problem. Uh, it was unfortunately introduced because of new code related to revivals that helps us better detect certain cheats. They don't mention changes of this nature typically in the patch notes because they don't want to give away too much information to cheaters so that they can adjust their tactics. But after receiving a lot of feedback from players who love Sanok, uh, they're also going to turn on MMR matchmaking for the map on live servers. So what this is, is when you are matched with similar players of similar rank. Um, notes from the team, uh, they say their goal is always to give you a better royale ex battle royale experience. And to do that, they're, they're talking about the bug fixes that they'll have to add and performance improvements. Um, they say they agree with criticisms of the game that many of you have made recently, including comments that our efforts need to be more effective and that the game still needs more improvement. We greatly appreciate this feedback, and we know that all of it comes from a place of support and love for PUBG. So they say right now we're developing new plans to resolve various problems, prioritizing server performance, client-side performance, anti-cheat, and bugs, they will continue shipping new content and, prepare, and preparing for the Invitational over the next few weeks, and they intend to have more concrete info to share about these plans shortly after the Invitational is over. Uh, and this is probably because they don't want to do very major changes until this Invitational is done with, because to introduce things like that in the middle of a tournament would be really not yeah, fair. That is so um, they know that the game is not in the best state. They know that they're losing players. And they know that people are very vocal about their criticisms for this game, and they're working on it. And we know they are. And I honestly, I haven't had much to complain about recently. I've been enjoying this game. I haven't been able to play it as much as I want to. We're still doing a podcast. We're here every week except last week. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep doing this because we love this game, and, and we know that we've built a very passionate community, so we want to give back to you guys just as much as we want to do this ourselves because it's so fun. Agreed. I just wanted to stress that we're not going anywhere anytime soon. No, we are not. All right, that's that's it for uh, you're leaving the personal computer place. It's gone. <laughs> we left. Bubble home. Beep, beep. beep. All right, so we got some weird-ass skins. <laughs> Um, yes, we do. The paper bag. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a horse. I'm a broom. A horse mask. I'm a butcher's outfit, airplane stewardess, Assassin's Creed looking stuff. Yeah, just weird stuff. But I get it. Like, if this was on PC, I would be kind of pissed. I'd be but like, it's mobile. this is stupid. But mobile, it's a different world. Yep. It's a strange world, but it's different, and that's fine. Patch version uh 0 0.7 they've got war mode they've yep. got i believe they have some spectate your friends games spectating uh, you have slrs grips balance adjustments emote they just have everything people you know play mobile it's a battery suck it's a cool game get yep. on there if you want if you don't have an xbox if you don't have a pc play the mobile version there's no reason not to if you have a cell phone that works yes exactly play it it's fun it's fully featured it's just, it's awesome. Uh, it's so much fun. So hop in there, play the mobile home. 
<laughs> play that mobile home. <laughs> uh, there's really not much to say about it. I mean, it's, I, I feel like it's not as public or publicized or visible in terms of like updates and stuff. I think people are really more focused on the Xbox and the PC versions. Um, but there's so many users. There's so many people playing this game and it's a really good game. So yep. it's also a really good intro. If for somehow, if for some ungodly reason you made it 47 minutes into this podcast and you have never played this game, <laughs> download the mobile version. And like, that's a very good introduction to this game. And if you like the mobile version, then buy an Xbox or buy a PC uh, and get it on there because it's the same game and it's free. So, so hop in and, and play it. I'm pretty sure all of you have been playing it already, but in case you haven't, do it. It's the question of the week. It's the question of the week. Dan, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can't. Oh my god, this is hilarious. I am. You just said that, and at the very exact moment, you probably just heard on the recording my Steam notification went off, and it was Lemon John just saying boobs <laughs> at the exact moment. So Cody's like, question of the week. Dan, what was it? And then John goes, boobs. <laughs> boobs. Boobs, Ozzy. These filmmakers are just f***ing boobs. What do you mean, Dad? Well, they're using the same f***ing joke as they did in the last Austin Powers movie. What joke? You know, joke about the long, smooth rocket that looks like some guy's Johnson. So the question of the week last week was, what was your ideal event mode? Design your favorite event mode. Um, not a lot of feedback. You guys can do better, I think. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. A little weak, but you mm-hmm. know, can't win them all. But we had some people jump in right away before I even posted and pinged, uh, pinned, pinged, <coughs> pinned the, uh, the comments. So, um, Colonel Ping. So I, was, I said Ping because I read his name. The winner of last week's top 10 contest, reigning champion, says... Here are my thoughts. So for me, a game mode I think would be cool to run with, although I've not figured out all of the logistics of it, uh, would focus on staggered timings. So here we go. Squads of four, maximum of 10 teams. There's no plane, but the game mechanic spawns each team into separate areas, but where there are at least four buildings minimum to loot. Okay. The The game randomly chooses one of four things to start off. That player has a specific amount of time say one minute 30 seconds to get loot they have to keep an eye on the timer and essentially make it back to their squad and then tag in the next man of the squad who has the exact same time to get their loot and come back so if they are outside of that time before they make it back to the squad point health starts to be lost like the blue zone and uh, it's there to call on how late or how far they travel or not so once all four have had their allotted time to loot in a tag type game mode It's then game on as usual, and the game mechanic kicks in with the restricted blue zone, etc. So he says, for me, this is all about the communication with your team, talking to them as you're looting to inform them of weapons and gear and where it is. You'll learn to leave weapons for specific players or indeed have to take weapons you're not familiar with. It would also mean you have to make quick decisions on what to take and when to take it. It is a search for a site or a search for meds. Uh, Is it attachments or is it armor? Your decisions shape your game and will suit your style. So tactics will come into play and different players may well become a medic, focus on a weapon for themselves, and then go on the hunt for meds to share with the team. Would someone then choose to go on an ammo run, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit of a simplistic summary, but he thinks it would be a cool game mode to run with because it makes it a little bit interesting at the start and focus on team team communication would be the key. That's kind of cool. The only like downside the is like you are waiting, uh, like you're, you're a squad of four and, and you you're, start your game waiting for, over you start five your minutes. game waiting. Yeah. But it's like yeah. a different way to think about, you know, what could you do if you didn't have a plane? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Good job, man. I like that. It's a lot of thought yeah. went into that. Thank you for yeah. that. Turbo Unicorn says, I'd like to see a hardcore mode. No map, no compass, no hit markers. You'd only need to depend on sight and sound. The blue zone could have a deeper color and make it easier to see from a distance, but you'd only have your game knowledge and instincts to know when you need to move. Another feature of this hardcore mode would be that weapons come with optics and attachments already randomly installed on the gun, but they can't be removed or swapped from the gun to gun. 
Optics would also be rare enough that less than half of the guns have any kind of optics installed, and you may want to have to fight iron sights more often. Airdrop guns would be fully kitted out. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, and maybe if this mode was at night, that would be yeah. even cooler. I've seen some pretty sick renders of a night I mode. Like, I like the idea of not knowing when the blue's moving. Yeah, that's cool. You sort of have to keep track uh, for yourself. Uh, there's also a game, it was um, Metro the Metro series, one of the mechanics in that game is that if you go above ground, uh, you have to put your gas mask on and your gas mask wears out after a certain amount of time. And you, there is no heads up display. You literally like press a button to pull up your wristwatch to see like how much life you have left in your gas mask. Really cool kind of thing where it sort of builds in UI elements into the game, uh, into the character and into the world rather than into like a, a, a heads up display. So they could do something like that here uh, with with compass. If you wanted to, you could have something that you have to pull out. So it like takes time away from fighting to have to do that. Uh, and it also puts you in a bad situation uh, if you're if you don't know your enemies are nearby. Yeah. But yeah, so, not knowing when the blue zone move, that's that's tough. Super cool. Yeah, Su super cool. Um, Matt Von Doom was talking to Jamie and was talking about how it would be cool to have a protect the president match. Uh, yeah. One person is selected as president. Everybody has to protect it. And if the president dies, you're out. That's that's fun. We've tried to do that as a Yeah, but if the game everybody was doing that, that would be awesome. Yeah, if there were like certain VIPs uh, that you had to eliminate or you got more points if you took them out as well. Things like that. That would be that'd be really fun. Or like maybe like a 50 versus 50 mode, like big teams, like really big teams when you have like, you know, five presidents. And like it's one cool. team is going against those or like an attack and defense kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that would be really, really cool if you had a, a, you know, two different teams with different objectives. There's so much they can do with this game. Um, but it's not so fun when you're just self dictating the rules. We found that out. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It has to be built into the game. Jamie says he plays as the president. Yeah. <laughs> um, he says it's a great idea. Escape from New York. Look that film up, Kurt Russell. Uh, Who has to look up Escape from New York? Hey, he's from across <laughs> the pond. Things are different over there. <laughs> President should have no weapons. Can't drive vehicles, but can you smoke? Maybe has four X or binoculars or something. Like a spotter, yeah. That, give yeah. him something, you know. Yeah, I think he should get a pistol because I think it's pretty lame if you can't shoot back even somehow. You know, maybe they can't loot, but maybe they spawn with just like two clips or sorry, <laughs> magazine. For the point click, I like point click dead. It's a mother Russia mode, aka DP car 98 and revolver is a mode that he'd like. Another is LMGs and ghillie suits. Both modes are always with a shrinking circle. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, there was one of these things we did was a um, World War II weapons, which was the car 98, the 1911, the Tommy gun. Um, should I forget which which other weapons, but um, that was just like themed modes based on certain eras. That, or AK, I think, was in there, um, to be able to, to have a set weapon load out. Be pretty fun. I like that. Yeah. But um, it's tough to go to that when you already have the experience of playing with these really fun weapons, like the, the more powerful sniper rifles and stuff. Yeah. But and, and this also brings me back to one of our previous chats, which was like explosive explosives mode. Yeah. Like give me, give me the rocket launchers and the mortars and the grenade launchers and the trip wires and the C4, all that stuff. Like make that a game mode. I think that's one of my ideal game modes. Just like we play this game so much to try to win, but if you just had just this ridiculous, like a fun, crazy fun up, mode, yeah, escape from New York situation, it'd be a really good blow off steam kind of game mode after losing so many times. You know? Yeah, yeah. Point click dead says I put some more thought into this. I think they should do a freeze tag mode. 25 people drop, say, in military. One person is it. He is a pan. He hits you and you're frozen. Or a tag mode where everybody gets pistols except the one squad gets an AR. If they kill you, you become it. Set a 15-minute timer. It's clearly not a winning game. It's a, it's a pass-the-time kind of game. Yeah. Proximity yeah. chat is a must. You yeah. know, it, st it stops you from wanting to quit the game. Yeah, and it gets you to trash talk your team, uh, your, your enemy teams. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just like stupid fun, like he says. Not every game mode has to be serious. Yeah, man. And in such a serious game, it would almost be pretty fun to have that option. Yeah. 
Kyler says, uh, after thinking about it, he thought of an actual event this time. Imagine a Mad Max style event on Miramar. It's a forced duo game or squad. You loot for the first five to ten minutes before you're teleported into a muscle car. Your goal is to get from one side of the map to the other alive. You can shoot at the other That's cars cool. while dodging the obstacles in the red zones. Another idea is a demolition derby. You loot for five to ten minutes before teleporting to a UAZ in Los Leones. You have to be the last car standing. That's so cool. Sick. So cool. So H1Z1 actually does this. They have a H1Z1 Auto Royale game, which is literally you are in a car, you can't get out with a squad, and you have to shoot all the other cars. And I thought, and I think it's kind of arcadey where you can hit jumps or run over ammo for power ups and stuff like that. Uh, but I think it's, I've heard it's a lot of fun. I heard this about this via the Infection podcast, and they were talking about it. I think it'd be a lot of fun to try that. Um, but do it with this, these game mechanics uh, w- would be really fun with the weapons Sick. leaning out the windows and all that. So, Love it. Yeah. Great job, guys. Great job. Question, question of the week next week is what is your preferred scope and why? Again, yeah. what is your preferred scope and why? Get in there. Write it down. This is for your Xbox folks because um, I think PC has had it for a while. And, and, you know, it's a legit question for them too. But um, I want to talk about this because you finally, on the Xbox side, have the, your hands on the 6x and the 3x and you get the new reticles blam boom and now we make the hotline blame take it on in me one day you have new messages so i heard about the world's greatest zoo the other day I decided to go check it out for myself. Pretty disappointed, though. They only had one animal. It was a dog. It was a real shit zoo. Uh, Hello, excuse me. This is Admiral Zach Barr, a.k.a. Zach. I just wanted to let you know about where Lemon John was giving a great point, and you all laughed about playing passive-aggressively were in the cough happened and you were muted. I just wanted to point out that I believe that it's typically gaslighting. Thank you. Good day. I heard Lemon John once dunked over Shaq. I also heard Dano's all rift. All right, boys, this is to prove that not all your listeners are scared to call the hotline. This is my voice. My gamer tag on Xbox is Voodoo Five O F I D E O H. You can look it up. Add me if you want. Maybe don't. I don't know. So I have a rant about PUBG. I'm a casual gamer. I have a toddler at home. I work crazy hours at work. So I like to sit down, nice glass of whatever. Maybe shoot some people in the face with an AK-47. I don't have all the time in the world to get all the points to get multiple crates. You can see where this is going. So you finally get enough points to get like the third or fourth crate of the week. What do you get? Same shit you got three times before. And then I get to exchange it for a measly 30 fucking points. They need to do something about this. Maybe if you want that cool flannel shirt, that's 10,000 points. You save up your points, you buy the fucking shirt. Don't make it so random. Or, if I already got the fucking black long sleeve shirt for the fourth time, maybe I can't get it anymore. Maybe you let me have something else. I got like 27 shirts, like one set of shitty sunglasses. I got a fucking hats I would never put on a corpse, let alone my character. It's fucking bogus. There's certain items I want. I'm not going to be able to get them because I don't have enough time to fucking play 24-7 like some of you people. Blue hole, fucking do something. What's your Jesus? That's all I got for this week. You'll be hearing from me again. Later. <laughs>